everybody. Welcome to the Fired Up with CJ show. We talk, we're talking to Yuval Ron, and he is talking about his newest album. And uh, what's the title of your album? I'm sorry. Tell us, Divine States of Mind. Yeah, the four. The four divine states of mind. Okay. And there are love, compassion, vicarious joy, and equanimity. So welcome. Thank you, CJ. Good to be here with you. Great to have you here. Now, you're, uh, what I love about your music is it's just it's just so thoughtful and so rich and full of of so much intention and so i wanted to talk about this album and what the inspiration was for this album and what you hope people will get from it when they listen to this music yes uh this album comes out from a commission that i received from dr gold of meta mindfulness music a record company that specializes with healing sounds and Dr. Gold was interested in the Buddhistic teaching of the four divine states of mind, which are called the Brahma Viharas in Sanskrit. And so there are four teachings and you're supposed to meditate on one and then go to the next one and then go to the third one and then go to the fourth one. The fourth one, the last one, the deepest one is equanimity. But you start meditating with the first one. The first one is loving kindness which is called Metta, M-E-T-T-A, loving kindness. It's, it's love, it could be romantic love, but it's really divine love that can manifest itself as romantic love, but it's really the divine love that comes in, in nourishing and, and the motherly love, the loving everybody, love, loving every living thing. That's Metta. Mm -hmm. So it's... It, so that's the first level, loving kindness. And, and then you go to the next level, which is compassion. Once you have loving kindness to all living beings, you develop compassion for all living beings, for all suffering, including the suffering of yourself, to mm. be compassionate to yourself. And then the next level is vicarious joy. It's interesting that after you go through loving kindness and compassion and experience the suffering of everybody, we can experience joy for others. Vicarious joy, mean, which is in Sanskrit, mudita. Mudita is the, the joy that somebody else is happy. So then you start working to make everybody that you meet be happier because that makes you happier, you see? And so that's the level of mudita. And then after that, the next and last level is equanimity where you feel the oneness of all things and there's no big tragedy or big incredible happiness. You have happiness and you have, you can feel the tragedy, but you realize that it's all one. L life and death is all one. Mm -hmm. Dark and light are one. There's all, everything is oneness and you have a certain stability, emotional stability going through life with this sense of equanimity, that everything is part of this play. Mm. Nothing, no, nothing that we cannot in, embrace. Mm. Everything is part of this divine play. And everything is equal. Everything is equal in that incredible life. And, and that's the sense of equanimity. Um, and so I decided to write four songs in Kirtan style. This is my first Kirtan album. Mm. And Kirtan is the, the uh, style of chanting call and answer. So you have the singer sings a phrase and then the audience sing back or the choir sings back. So it's, it's a devotional style of music from India called Kirtan. They use it a lot in yoga classes. Yogis use it. I've been a yogi for 20 years and in my class, my teacher always play kirtan music mm. so i've been hearing this music and then i decided you know what i want to use that style and make a contribution to that style mm. to create new kirtan music with mm. mystic teaching of the higher virtues four higher virtues that we should strive for and have people instead of just sitting and meditating thinking about loving kindness thinking about compassion thinking about vicarious joy try to feel it through the music. And so I chose four mantras, four Sanskrit phrases that I associated with loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. And I had 
four incredible singers, female singers from around the world sing those mantras. The first one is, um, well, Deva Pramal, which many people know, Deva mm -hmm. Pramal, a great Egyptian singer. She sings the song about joy. Mm. And uh, I chose the great flamenco singer, Estrella Morente from Spain to sing the piece about compassion, which is all about suffering and pain. And I thought, what, what would be better than gypsy flamenco to express the pain and suffering? Mm. You know? mm. So she did a great job. She recorded in Granada in Spain for mm -hmm. us. Deva Pramal recorded in Australia. She was in Australia on a tour, so she got into a studio there. Then I got um, uh, Chloe, two young, uh, two young singers that are up and coming. One is called uh, Chloe Pumordi, and she's Persian-American from LA. She sang the song about loving kindness, Meta. And Uyanga Bold from Mongolia, incredible singer from Mongolia who is now mm. in Los Angeles, she sang the, the song for equanimity. Mm. Mm. So, so you have different singers, so you're playing the instrumentals in the back, and it was it, so I assume that you were merging these things together, so they would send you their part, and then you, a lot of the stuff that you've told me in the past is about layering music, so what was the, uh, so you had, you were playing the oud, is that what it's called? Yeah, I, I played the oud on um, three of the four songs. And I had a flamenco guitarist named Adam Del Monte play flamenco guitar on the Compassion flamenco piece. And uh, one of the critics wrote, you know, this is the first ever flamenco kirtan. Music. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so there's something new there. Um, I recorded a couple of musicians in India, uh, incredible uh, sitar master from Mumbai, India, uh, Nayan Ghosh uh, recorded for us. Um, there was, was one uh, percussionist that I work with from uh, India named um, uh, Somnat Roy, who happened to be on a tour in, in LA about a year and a half ago. And I, he came to my studio and recorded the drums, all the percussions from South India. And so we added a couple of masters from India who live in America, like Alam, um, Alam uh, Khan, who lives in San Francisco. He's the director of the Classical Indian Music College, mm. the only, only college in America for classical Indian music. His father, Ali Akbar Khan, who was the greatest sarod player in the world, came to America in the 50s and started that uh, college and Jayutal and others studied with him. Now his son is leading the college, his name is Alam, and he plays the sarod, which is like a sitar, but more gentle sounding. So I brought him to play. Uh, it was funny, uh, I'll tell you this funny story. So uh, this guy, Alam, who is young, he, I don't know, maybe he's in 30s or 40s, and he's now the director of the college in San Francisco. He recorded the sarod part, and I sent it to India, to the sitar master, who's an old sitar master, Nayan Ghosh, who's considered the best living uh, sitar player in the world. And he listens to all the music of the album and he writes to me, who's playing the sarod? It's so exquisite, it's so beautiful. Mm. Who is it? And I said, well, it's Alam Khan, the son of Ali Akbar Khan. He said, ah, He's like my nephew. I'm like his uncle. We are from the same family. You know, the, the families studied together. The, all their ancestries, they have, they have two lineages that it's two families that combine, you know, three, four generations ago. They, they are grand, the great grandfathers studied with the same master in India. And then they keep this lineage alive. They, they feel still like a family because they originate from the same master. So those two families always play together. So they consider themselves like one family. So then I went to Alam in San Francisco and I said to him the compliment that the great elder from his family, they didn't know that he's playing on the same album, gave the compliment. And it was so, so moving to see him, you know, getting that compliment through me from the elder player who, master who is in, still in Bombay. India. And it was wonderful. You know, it's a, a discovery and lineage connection that we didn't even know 
Mm. I didn't know when I casted those great masters to play on my album. But uh, for them, it's very significant. You know, it's very mm. important for them, the lineage, the musical lineage. Yeah. The wow. So there's a lot of magic that happened with the creation of this album. And then mm -hmm. it sounds like, you know, oftentimes you had done layering to like in, in the past albums where you did like, EMDR, you had all these different sound components. Is that part of this as well, or is it just the raw instrumentation and, and the intention that is behind it that creates the magic? Well, this production is more like a, a pop music, a kirtan music, you know, where you have drums and bass and instruments and flutes and, and sometimes cello uh, strings. I had a string orchestra and a cellist. Um, uh, come and play and singers so the layering uh, is done through normal musical layers it's not anything subliminal or anything like this but it, but it works in layers for example uh, the choir that I added it's a children choir mm. that uh, you know after everybody recorded their music and after the soloist recorded their solos after the great female singers sang their part I took it to um, a school in uh, Pasadena that have a very good children choir. And I chose children choir because I thought about the future. You know, these higher virtues are really important to instill in, in the children, in the youth. Mm. So I, I brought in a children choir instead of having a kirtan choir. You know, usually in kirtan you have yogis, you know, yoga yeah. studios. Fourth, yeah. You know, the yogis sing along and it's great. And that was the first thing that came to my mind. Oh, I'm going to go to one of the yoga studios in Los Angeles and I'll, I'll bring all the yogis to my studio to sing along. But then I thought, you know what, that's the usual. Let me see if I can do it in a different way because I wanted to have a contribution to Kyoto music and do it a little different. I thought children, children voices, mm. just so, for me, it's so opening the heart. You know, it's just expanding the heart when you hear the children voices singing in Sanskrit, you know, um, they sang um, Om Shanti Om, Om Shanti Om. Mm. You know, all the Sanskrit chants for us, Loka Samasta Sukhi No Bhavantu. So I recorded them as a last, last, last layer, the last recording. Mm. And I went to the school and I talked to them. I gave them a talk about the four <laughs> divine teachings from Buddhism, what, what does it mean to be, what, what does it mean love and kindness, to love every living thing? How, how can you love every live, living thing? You know, and, and we talked about compassion, we talked about uh, joy, we talked about equanimity. So it was a, an opportunity for educational outreach to these children in a public school in Los Angeles. And they, they have, a, they, they are called the Blair, the Blair Studio Singers. They, they have a club, like a choir, in the school, and they, are, they have an ex excellent uh, director, conductor named Casey Dugardis, who's a specialist in vocal music. So they're, they're on a very high level, but it's in a public school. It's in a public middle school. I love it. I love it. And, and so you have kids from every walk of life in that public school. I mean, you know, Los Angeles public school, you've got all the ethnicities in the world in that choir right there in the middle of the city. And I stand there in front of them. They, and they come from all different traditions. And we talk about loving kindness and compassion and equanimity and joy. Mm. And each one of them could relate to it from their own cultures, you know, their own religious background, their yeah. own ethnic background. They all found it and then they sang it mm. and i was really impressed with the mm. feeling and the sound that they brought nice i love it so um we've been talking to you val ron and he um and uh, tell us how people get a hold of your album well it's everywhere you just type in four divine states of mind and you'll mm -hmm. find it on google music on apple music on amazon on spotify everywhere Okay, got it. All right. And what I want to do in the next segment is to hear some of the themes and break down some of the four themes that you talked about. Thank you so much. Pleasure.